Whether it's ancient combat or modern sport, winning is what it's all about. I have to conquer a skill that I know absolutely nothing about. But how do you win? The History Channel car is history! This man has learned the hard way. Now, he's ready to show you. It's like boxing, football, and the state fair all rolled into one. In the Middle Ages, knights are more than battlefield warriors. They're all stars, the professional athletes of the day. And in peacetime, the tournament is a perfect opportunity to show off their skills, to prove they have the right stuff. There are two main events. The team competition is hand-to-hand -hand combat, with swords, axes, and maces. The joust is individual, man-to-man, -man, on horse, and on foot. Many knights were killed at the tournament. For those who survived, it was the best battle training you could get. It wasn't battle, but it was designed to be exactly like it. So choose your weapons and learn how to win at the tournament. All right, guys, gather around. Right. Hope you're feeling fit. Are you feeling fit? Yeah. Yes. You're going to have to be, because this time you're going to be experiencing something that you have never experienced before. We're going to learn how to win a medieval tournament. There are two distinct competitions, the joust and the tourney. Put them together and you have a tournament. First, the joust. This will be mounted lancers on horseback tilting at each other. Second, the tourney. That's where a group of knights fight together in foot combat. Now that is going to be you guys. Oh, wow. And you are going to be fighting the Red Knights. Now listen, we've invited them, so they have the choice of weapons. So, we've got to learn how to win a medieval tournament in public, in full plate armor, fighting with any weapons that they choose. Our combat team has only 72 hours to learn how to win with a whole range of weapons. There's nothing like preparing for battle, knowing that you are actually going to fight. Tournaments were excellent training for men and horses, a testing ground for new developments in weapons and armor, and they gave the knight an opportunity to gain a reputation for skill and guts. The first known tournament took place in France in 1066, and it became the most popular spectator sport of the Middle Ages. A king or important nobleman would set a day and invite other knights to a contest of arms. They often fought in honor of a lady. Our tournament will be fought according to the old traditions in the old ways, with an area enclosed by lists or fences. We'll have tents, we'll have royal boxes for the dignitaries, and a herald to keep order. And it'll go ahead, rain or shine. The first part of the tournament we have to prepare for is the joust, in which the object is to knock a man off his horse. First, the jousters charge up to four times with the lance. Second, if both remain in the saddle, then they ride at each other with alternative weapons, again up to four times. Third, they dismount and fight on foot, being allowed three or four strokes each, taken in turn. If there is no clear winner, the judges decide. Points are awarded for skill and accuracy, or deducted for foul strokes. But like a modern boxing match, there is no need for points if either man is knocked out or worse. This is how they honored knights who were killed in the tournament. Eventually, the tournament became so popular and shed so much blood that it actually affected the number of knights available for war. In an event in Germany in 1240, 80 knights are said to have been killed. Tournaments caused riotous behavior, feuds and bitter rivalries. The church constantly condemned the practice, even denying Christian burial to those dying at tournament. Even royalty was divided. If the King of England banned them, his knights simply went to France to tournament there. William the Conqueror forbade them. Richard I made money from licensing them. Edward I loved them. But no one could stop them. The tournament became increasingly regulated, and gradually concessions were made towards safety. 
By at least 1200, the head of the lance had been rebated or blunted. This was designed to um, knock a man off his horse, not just to skewer him. The war saddle, with its high rear cantle, risked breaking the man's back in a joust. So smoother saddles were introduced with uh, smooth back and sides so that a man could be easily unhorsed. Our team will be fighting in plate armour, but for 300 years, mail was used. And this was useless against a lance, blunted or otherwise, so you needed a shield. First these were made of wood, then later of steel. The war helmet was also pretty useless in the joust, so gradually the helm was introduced. This is the first piece of kit specifically designed for the tournament. These were extremely heavy, but at least they give you good protection. Often the left-hand side of the helm was uh, increased in its thickness. It was here that the lance was most likely to hit. Now, whether in the joust or in foot combat, this thing would deflect most blows. But the impact was still quite considerable, and it was said that you could always tell a jouster because he would have a broken nose. The joust itself is over in a few seconds, so my colleague and I here are going to do a walking joust to demonstrate all the finer points. Right, back to the starting position. Now, it was essential at the start to be calm and steady, not just for yourself, but for the horse. He was relying on you absolutely. Back in the start position. Your horse is ready. You lower the lance across the horse's neck and you spur into an immediate gallop. These courses were very short, so you had to reach the maximum speed at the point of impact. As you came in, you were constantly adjusting your lance. Your aim was for the helm or for the shield. If you were too far to the left, you risked hitting the horse, which would be a disgrace. Too far to the right, and you might miss. The shield itself, you had to keep under immediate control. This was where your reins were held. Also, if you had your shield too far out and it was hit hard, it would smash into you and hit your own visor. If it was at the wrong angle, you could deflect the lance straight up into your face. So, the point of impact is approaching, and... Now, at this moment, several things might happen. First of all, you could both miss and the crowd would boo you. Or one of you would hit and the lance would be deflected. Or you might both get good hard hits and you might just about recover enough to get back into your saddle, which you have to do immediately because he was the other end waiting for you. Or... You're knocked off your horse, maybe killed. But if you're still conscious, then you can be sure of one thing. It's not over yet. During a joust, you may find yourself in this position. Looking up at the sky, wondering where you are. And then you remember, oh, the shock of the impact of the lance and falling from the horse is massive. But you've fallen from horses all your life, and your armor is reasonably well padded. Oh, but your head is spinning, so you get rid of your helmet. Which is a mistake. You pick up your shield, and you choose your next weapon. Now, by this time, your opponent has dismounted and he's waiting for you at the other end. Now, depending on the rules you've chosen for this combat, you can each have up to three strokes. As the fallen knight, you go first. Ah! Useless. Your back hurts, your head hurts, ah! oh, and that hurts too. Now, you should have pretended to be weaker than you are, surprised him with your last stroke. It's too late now. Ah! And you're down again. Your energy is really going now. You've just got one more last stroke. So maybe it's time for a cheat. Ah! Now, was that one stroke or two? The crowd loves it. Yeah! So the judges may allow it. But what you've forgotten is that now he can do the same to you. Ah! Ah! I should have worn my helmet. We are now ready for the joust, but preparing for the team combat is another story. The Red Knights, our opponents, are too good at this game to take for granted. We still don't know what tactics they will use or even what weapons they will choose to fight with. The tension is rising and some of the team are not happy. This stuff here is digging into my hips a little bit. I'm feeling a lot of pain. You can feel the whole weight of the entire upper part just hanging right here and here. It's difficult just to move your hand. You can't really move. You're just very, very clanky. This thing pinches everywhere. Going to the toilet is difficult. You have to take the whole lot off, and that's there's no other way. 
On the tournament field, the barriers are set up and the carpenters are finishing their work. The jousters have arrived early. Their lives will be at risk, so they need time to test their armor and equipment. They exercise their horses and greet their comrades in arms. The Knights of Europe belong to an elite group of noble families. They knew each other, they fought each other, they were united in their contempt for the common people. But there was more at stake here than just honor. There was money, loads of money. For some knights, fighting is their only chance of fame and fortune. And for every knight, a duel such as this one is the only means of settling disputes and avenging insults. But they live by the code of chivalry. Whether in battle, in a duel, or at the tournament, if a knight surrenders, he is treated with respect. In battle, he becomes a prisoner and has to pay a ransom for his own freedom. In the duel, or at the tournament, the loser is required to give up his horse and armor to the winner. These are extremely valuable, and he has to pay for their return. Surprisingly, it's the loser who is supposed to set the amount to be paid. If he gives too low a price, he makes himself look cheap, dishonorable. So he says what he can afford, and the victor accepts it. For many families, this could mean absolute financial ruin. The team portion of the tournament, the tourney, is like a series of individual duels all fought together. This is a combat between any number of knights, usually on foot. This is as much like war as possible. Full battle armor is worn. The weapons might or might not be blunted. With so many combatants, the judges can't watch everything, and it's extremely dangerous to intervene. If a man is knocked down, he can be revived and sent back into the fight, until seriously injured or unconscious. It's a fight to the finish. There's no such thing as a tie. At first, there was no armor specifically designed for the foot combat of the tourney, but there were some interesting weapons. The spear is not usually a knightly weapon, but it made for some good stand-up fighting. Blunted weapons were often used. Some were even specially made of wood and whalebone. The club was popular. Lots of knockdowns, not too much damage to that expensive armor. Axes were still in use, and maces, and the flail. And a new weapon was introduced. It was used by knights on foot, both in the tournament and at war. The pole axe. All right, Phil, could you take those swords and shields, these two? OK, gather around, please, around the back. All right, we've heard from the Red Knights that they're uh, going to be using these weapons, pole axes, OK? Grab one of those, stand over there, please. All right, pole axe, descended from the double-handed axe, but it's a close combat weapon. It has an axe head which can cleave through armor, especially the weak points, but actually it can also buckle armor if you hit hard enough. OK, I'm going to hit you hard. You pat it underneath? Yeah. There, OK? But there's also another side to it, the hammer head. Now, the hammer can actually crush armor, break the bone beneath it. So, for instance, you'd aim for the arms, you'd aim for the legs, but also you could crush in the sides of the arm and break the ribs beneath it. Finally, you have the spike. Now, this would pierce straight through armor if you hit it hard enough. There's a bit of a risk, because if he's wearing really good armor, you're going to bounce off and you're dead. So, the best points to aim for with this armor-piercing point is actually between the armor. There, in the shoulders, in between the armor there. At the sides, if you can get it inside there. Uh, inside the arm here is always a vulnerable place. Anywhere around the thighs, anywhere underneath the breastplate. So, you have the three choices. But at the same time, you've also got a butt, because having put one stroke in, you can then bring the butt in for another stroke. You can use the butt to knock someone over. You can use the butt straight into the face. Any strike that you make in, that, in the face area with the helmet, you may not get through the helmet, but it's going to be a hell of a blow for him, and he's going to be either down or he'll be stunned for a second, and you can then follow up immediately with an axe. OK, so let's come around here. So you get the feeling of it. Have a go. OK, here we go. Good, OK, now immediately you can feel how adaptable this weapon is. It's a brilliant close combat weapon, but you haven't got much time to learn it, OK? So away you go, talk to each other, work out what you're going to do, work out your strokes, go. The flexibility of the poleaxe made it the favourite weapon of the knight fighting on foot. We have many illustrations of its use, in battle and at the tourney. Even in full armour, clashes could be fast and furious. 
sparring like this was highly skilled, and because of the armor, only a strong hit will have much effect. We have less than a day to perfect our techniques for hand-to-hand -hand combat, but we must also learn tactics, fighting together as a team, getting each other out of trouble. This is our last chance to get in all the practice we can, because the Red Knights have arrived. And we fight tomorrow. The moment of truth is almost here. Soon it will be time to put our skills to the test. Tournaments were the glittering social events of the Middle Ages. Everyone came. Horse traders, money lenders, armorers, acrobats, minstrels, troubadours, and professional ladies of all sorts. It was like a great day at the races, except that some tournaments lasted a week and attracted knights from all over Europe. Everyone gathered on Sunday, jousted on Monday and Tuesday, rested on Wednesday, and on Thursday, sides were picked for the tourney. This is tilting at the rings. The idea was for the lances to hit the rings. If you were really skillful, you could get the lance straight through them. This warms up the men and the horses and the audience. It's also an essential part of training as the rings get smaller and smaller, so your target diminishes each run. This is riding at Quintain. That's the Quintain with the shield on the sack. The idea was to ride as fast as possible at that shield, hit it with the lance. If you were too slow, the sack would come round and hit you on the back, knock you off your horse. No matter what precautions were taken, there were many injuries at tournament. Many men died, and so did kings. In 1524, Henry VIII of England forgot to lower his visor during a joust. He was nearly killed. History would have changed if that had happened. Here they go. In 1559, Henri II of France wasn't so lucky. A lance pierced his helmet, ended up in his cheek. Ten days later, he expired in agony. Here they go again. At least if you were injured, the chances of survival were fair. Medical care in the Middle Ages was based on herbal remedies, and it was really quite good. Here they go again. He's lost his armor and his horse. He has to give them to the winner. Now, it's my turn. I have to get ready. All right, guys, listen up. Listen up, we've agreed the rules for the foot tourney with the Red Knights, all right? If we're knocked to the ground, we can get up and fight on, provided they don't get a strike in when we're down. If they do that, that's the killer blow and we're out of the match. If a man goes down, we have to cover him. Otherwise, that man is out and we'll be one man short, okay? Now, the Red Knights are fielding five men. Now, I'm gonna fight myself, that means I have to choose four of you we need one with a pole axe, that'll be you. We need a sword and shield, yourself. We need mason shield, that'll be you. And one more sword and shield, okay? Great. Good luck, everyone, let's go, come on. As the teams line up, you can feel the tension and excitement. Now we'll see if we've got what it takes to win. The fight begins fast and furious. The first man down is one of ours, finished off by an axe to the chest. We have to fight with a man short. But we are stronger than they expect and our hard training pays off. A roundhouse blow by the mace takes out the first Red Knight. In quick succession, the Reds lose a second man to the broadsword. We lose a man the same way. Then a third Red Knight falls as our mace strikes again. Our Polax launches a frontal assault, but he's too confident. He is outmaneuvered and cut down. 
the end must be near. Two quick cuts from my longsword and another red goes down. But the last red knight refuses to surrender. We close in on him. I succeed in trapping his sword. He is knocked to his knees by the mace and I finish him off with the longsword. We've won. Our team has the last men standing. Take his helmet off. Over here. What are you doing? You're doing another joust, Peter. No, I'm not. No, what? Yeah, you're no, right. no, wait a minute. Who put you up to this? No, 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 no. Who am I jousting with? No, 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 I did that with the most. Come on. No, 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 come no, no, on. This will knock me off the first time I did it. wasn't me. Are you joking? I wouldn't do that. And yes, our, our fights were staged as well. These weapons may be blunt, but they can still kill you. And it gives us more respect for our ancestors who did this for real. The tournament was a celebration of skill, talent and courage. Not much different from the Super Bowl or the World Series. But this game could be deadly. For thousands of nights, the tournament was the last battle they ever fought.